Thank you, Sema. I'll make some remarks, and then Eric is here as uh, the expert to correct or change. So in uh, uh, 2011, we see you know, the same uh, story of a very vigorous demand for the dispute resolution services that are provided by the WIPO Arbitration and Mediation Centre in relation to uh, cases of cyber squatting with uh, a slight increase in the number of cases that the centre handled, uh, increasing, the increase being 2.5%. Uh, and overall, we had over 2,700, 2,764 domain name, internet domain name cases, covering nearly 5,000 separate domain names. Uh, as we've said in past years, this is a very international procedure uh, reflecting the international character of the internet and activity on the internet. So uh, these cases have been administered by some 323 panellists from 49 countries in 13 different languages. Um, two other comments I would make just by way of introduction. We are dealing with a rising share of uh, country code, top-level domain disputes, CCTLDs. They're now 16% uh, of all of the disputes that are handled by the WIPO Arbitration and Mediation Centre. And our capacity to handle those is increasing with, for example, uh, the administration of cases relating to .QA, Qatar, and uh, uh, and its Arabic script equivalent. The second comment is that uh, this year is the year of much activity in respect of the expansion of the generic top-level domain space. As you know, since January of this year, since January 2012, interested parties have been able to apply to ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, for their own top-level domain, dot whatever uh, it might be. The application procedures close in April of this year, uh, and then uh, there will open the possibility for other parties to file objections against the applications that have been made. Uh, and WIPO the WIPO Centre has been appointed by ICANN as the exclusive provider of dispute resolution services uh, uh, in respect of trademark-based objections to applications for new generic top-level domains. Uh, and so that is a procedure that we will be administering but watching with great interest as this expansion of the top-level domain space uh, unfolds in the course of this year. Any questions? Dan. Yes, it's a question to uh, Mr. Fink, uh, Mr. Wilbur, sorry, um, because I know you've been uh, a rather vocal critic of the proposals or the, the idea of having um, altering the existing uh, dispute settlement um, procedures for cyber squatting and lots of concern that these new top level domains would lead to an explosion in the number of cases. I was wondering to the extent to which your concerns have been addressed. I know you've written a number of letters on this issue warning about um, any change in the existing procedures. Have those concerns been addressed or are we still in the same situation we were the last time we spoke on this. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, I think what you're referring to is, is perhaps picking up on, on something that we did address right here a year ago, um, which is uh, which concerns the um, the state of the existing dispute resolution mechanism on on which the Director General has just, of course, reported the numbers for last year, namely the UDRP. And here ICANN, the, the body which is responsible for the, let's say, structuring and organization of the domain name system as a whole, um, have been um, um, going through processes discussing the possible need to review and revise the, the UDRP system in the future. Um, and so the concern that we have been expressing uh, was that um, 
that that might not benefit, in fact, the efficacy of UDIP, but that UDIP might actually emerge from such an effort uh, rather diluted as a less effective mechanism than it has been so far. Um, last year has seen a lot of policy activity about that around ICANN. Uh, and in the end of the day, uh, it has been decided uh, by ICANN after a lot of policy input, including from WIPO, but also others, such as INTA, the International Trademark Association, that uh, any uh, UDIP revision effort will not start until a good period has passed uh, after the introduction of the first numbers of new top-level domains. And since the introduction of new top-level domains is from now estimated to be just about one year uh, uh, ahead of us. That means that this whole UDP revision effort is going to be, uh, is, 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 has been postponed for, uh, for, a, a, uh, for an interesting period for the time being. So that's, that goes to the concern about the efficacy of the UDP today, which continues to function very well overall. Um, perhaps th taking this occasion to, uh, to to, to raise uh, and confirm a concern which you also see in, in those various letters and in our policy activity with ICANN, which is the efficacy of new mechanisms additional to DDRP, which are in the pipeline uh, in relation to new top level domains, uh, which will be uh, introduced uh, in the course in the beginning of next year. There, I can have been uh, developing uh, different mechanisms. One of the w ones is the one that the Director General has mentioned, the pre-delegation dispute resolution policy for trademark owners that believe that the applications for new top levels come too close to their trademark. But there are also other new mechanisms in the pipeline. And, uh, and so um, our concern at the moment is, uh, is about the efficacy of those other new ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution Mechanisms, whether they, in the course of 2013, will prove helpful to trademark owners and not unduly costly and, and, uh, and uh, taking too much time. We're looking at that and, of course, beyond writing the letters, we engage quite actively with ICANN, uh, their staff and in their meetings. No, I also take the floor of follow-up. I just wanted to follow up on your comments, Mr. Wilbers, about the, the alternative um, dispute mechanisms that are out there. Can you give an example of one which is of a particular concern that you mentioned 2013, there might be an introduction of these, and who would be introducing it, and what okay. would they be doing? So, so let me maybe uh, roughly take you through the timeline which I can have been uh, putting out and which you can find back on their, on their website. Um, since uh, 11 or 12, rather, January, uh, applicants um, uh, can uh, submit applications for new top-level domains, so new .coms, to the right of the dot, um, which, uh, which they would like to be operating in the future. And that period runs um, until 12 April. And I can tell you that from our information, I can have today received roughly 140, 150 indications of from parties that wish to, to, um, to let, let, me, let me correct this here, let me say this more precisely. Within this three months period, um, uh, applicants, uh, not all applicants will immediately be filing uh, their full application for top level domain, but they also have an early opportunity to, to file an intent to, uh, to submit applications for top-level domains. And so I can, as of today, seem to have received something like between 140 and 150 of these pre-applications, um, which therefore within this period until 12 April would have to be transformed into actual applications for top-level domains. However, it must be understood that each one of those 140 or so pre-applications may be converted into up to 50 actual application for new top level domains top level domains so it's hard to do the, to do the math on this because we do not know quite simply today whether you know which ones of those 140 represent only one future application and which ones represent up to 50 but this already means that we're looking probably at hundreds of new applications uh, applications for new domains coming in we will know about this in may 
um, when ICANN will be publishing, will be closing, after closing the application window, will be publishing the list of applications that have been received. Um, we don't know today what that uh, will include, but uh, it's quite likely that there will be quite a few um, geographical applications in there, for example, cities trying to uh, uh, have their operate their own top level domain under the name of the city. There may well be a number of brand owners trying to take their own domain. Um, and there may also be uh, certain domains which probably come closer to uh, certain more generic terms, certain types of services, certain areas of business, certain types of products. I can uh, will run an objection, a public objection or comment period for a couple of months after May, and then effectively um, until roughly the end of the year, an objection period is starting in which outsiders, including trademark owners, can file objections against any of these applications for potentially infringing a variety of rights, such as trademark rights, but there are others as well. Um, after that period is over, uh, if there has been an objection filed against an application, then that objection period process will start, which will take a number of months, uh, into the spring of 2013. If there is no objection filed against any of these applications, uh, which we will know by the end of this year, uh, then those domains obviously could come online earlier, so probably in the first, uh, in the first part of, uh, of next year. So that is roughly speaking the, the timeline that ICANN is, uh, is, uh, has been announcing. Sorry, very briefly, and the UDRP would be the rules for settling disputes within those new domains, correct? The UDRP will remain effective. That means, uh, it's, I think it's important to understand that when it comes to the new domains, that the first concern, of course, is possible objections, as I just mentioned, against that top-level application itself, against the name to the right of the dot. But once the domain has passed that hurdle, has passed the objection period, and becomes operational, then the attention shifts back, of course, again, to registrations being undertaken by anybody, third parties, to the left of the dot. So X dot, whatever that new top level might be. Um, and for those second level registrations, the UDIP continues to function. And then on top of that, there will be one or two additional second level mechanisms.